and welcome back to Miss Finance. Today we're going to have a look at the internal rate of return. But before we do, consider subscribing so that you don't miss out on any future tutorials. So let's get straight into it. So internal rate of return, otherwise known as IRR. So this in short is the interest rate that provides a net present value of zero when applied to a project as the internal rate of return. Now the higher the internal rate of return, the more advantageous the project, because that means that our return on the capital invested is higher. So we're going to get our money back plus. And if one project has a higher IRR than another, then you're going to select that project. So organisations who wish to invest will set an IRR for the company that any projects must achieve before they will invest. So if they don't achieve that particular IRR, then they won't even consider the project for investment. And the reason why that is, is because this IRR here will most likely reflect the organization's cost of capital, as in what they're willing to invest. So you probably see in a company who's doing this, when they're calculating IRR, they will use a spreadsheet or some kind of system because IR can get very complicated, especially if you're looking at numerous projects. Now, in order to understand the internal rate of return, we need to understand the difference between a present value and a future value. Now, the two are very closely linked. So the future value is how much can I expect to make in a certain amount of time in the future if I was to invest, say, £100 a day. So if I was to invest £100 a day at a rate of return of 2% per annum, then I can expect that my £100 would be worth £102 by the end of year one, and that would be its future value. Now, the present value, again, is how much money do I need to invest today to achieve a certain value in future. So if I wanted to achieve £102 in future, and I knew that the rate of return was 2%, I would make sure that I invested £100 today. So the present value would be £100, and the £102 at the end of year one would be its future value. If I continue to receive 2% a year, that £102 by year two is now worth £104.40. So internal rate of return, recognises that money in effect has a time value. So if we did this a little bit differently, what you'd see in a table is that in year zero, you've got £100. Year one, you've got 102 and year two, you have year 104. So each year, you just times in by 1.02. So again, the present value you can see there is 100 because that's at today. What do I need to invest today? And the future cash flow is the 102 and the £104.4. Now, all of this that you're seeing is an example of a discounted cash flow. So where we're discounting the present value to achieve what we know the future value is going to be. And it's also known as compound interest. Now, you might want to receive £100 at the end of year one of investing. And let's imagine that the interest rate is actually 10%. Now, if I want to work out, well, how much do I need to invest in order to achieve £100 at year one, then there's a formula that I can do, which is taking the £100 that I want to achieve times by 100 and divided by 110, because 110 takes into account this 10% interest rate, and that gives me £90.90. .90. So my future cash flow would be £100, but the £90.90 .90 would be the present value of that £100. So what do I need to invest today, presently, in order to achieve £100 in future? So if we put this down at the bottom here, you can see at zero, we're investing £90.90. In year one, we'd achieve £100. And in year two, we would achieve £110 because the interest rate is 10% a year. So if you just keep times by 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, you can see how that's calculated. So in effect, we can work out present value and future value two different ways. So we can work it backwards if we need to. Now, if I wanted to achieve £100 at the end of year two of investing and the interest rate was 10%, what I would do is take £100 times it by 100 divided by 110 times by 100 divided by 110, which would get me to £82.64. So that would be the present value that I need to invest today to achieve £100 in two years' time. 
So another way of looking at that is the 100 pound times by 100 divided by 110 squared. So we put that in the table at the bottom again. At year zero, I'm investing 82 pound 64. At the end of year one, I'd achieve 90 pound 90. So 82 pound 64 times by 110 percent. And at the end of year two, I would achieve my 100 pound. So this is why it's important to understand the discounted cash flow before you move on to IRR because IRR develops on the concept of discounted cash flows further. So it's just another word for discounted cash flow yield or DCF. So IRR is the rate of return that we can get back what we've put in. So how fast can I get my investment back or break even on a particular investment in effect? So if we look at this table here, all this is doing is breaking out what the IIR formula is doing. So it's just seeing at what point am I making money back on my investment so that I've got my investment back plus. So here you can see that at 22% cost of capital is when I'm starting to break even. So if we look at something called interpolation, this estimates the value between two known values. So it estimates Basically, the low cost of capital percentage, which gives a positive net present value figure, and the high cost of capital percentage, which gives a low net present value figure. So we can basically work out between the two at what point we're going to be breaking even quite easily. So the formula for that would just be the low cost of capital percentage plus the net present value at the lower percentage divided by the net present value at the lower percentage plus the net present value at the higher percentage and then you times that by the difference between the high and low cost capital percentage and that will give you your internal rate of return. So if we were to do this in an example, imagine that cost of capital is 10%, net present value is 5,913 and we have a 24% cost of capital where the net present value would be negative 787. So we'd have this 10% in at the start because that's the low cost of capital percentage. And then I would add the low net present value, so 5913. And what I'd do is divide that by 5913 plus 787, which is the highest cost of capital net present value. And I'd times that by the difference between the 24% and the 10%, i.e. 14%, and overall that would give me 22.35% or 22% to the nearest percentage. So just one final example. If I'm asked in the exam to approximate the internal rate of return against 10%, 15% and 20%, and I've got a net present value table at the top there, where you can see my investment of 500 in year zero and then the present value in year one, year two and year three. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a compound interest table where you can see the 10, 15 and 20 percent and what they would be each year. Because as you know, in year one, you've got 1.1 percent if it was 10 percent. In year two, we'd add another 10 percent. In year three, another 10 percent. So that's all that table's doing on the right. So what we do is we would take the 500, I'd divide it by 1 in year 1, in year 0, and then I would add the 200 divided by 1.1, plus the 300 divided by 1.21 in year 2, and the 450 divided by 1.33 in year 3. So I'd just do that for every one of those percentages. So let's work out what they would be. So the first one at 10% is going to give a net present value of 268. And then at 15%, this is going to give a net present value of 197. And then the third one is going to give a net present value of 135. So we'd go with the third one there because that's the closest to zero. So we'll just do one final example. So if an accountant has prepared MPV calculations, so net present value calculations, where 10% interest would be 4,920 net present value, 12% would be 3,250, 14% would be 1,350, and 16% would give you negative 5,350. Then the way to work out the IRR 
is to take the 10% plus 4920, because that's the lowest rate, divided by 4920 plus 5350, and then multiply that by the difference between the 16% and the 10%. That gives us 12.87%, all rounded 13%. So what if the bank was to then say, we'll offer you a loan at 10%? should they go ahead with the project? And the answer would be yes, because the 13% is higher than the 10%. So I hope that gives you a better understanding of the internal rate of return. If you like the video, please do hit the like button, consider subscribing, and I shall see you on the next video.